Gemeinsam mit dem Premierminister wollen wir diese wieder erstarken lassen, erklärte Nehammer. Laut UN-Schätzungen haben 22,6 Millionen Menschen in Äthiopien nicht ausreichend zu essen. Die Unterernährungsrate liegt bei 27 Prozent. Darüber verlor der Kanzler freilich kein Wort. Auch nicht, dass der österreichische Steuerzahler 800.000 Euro für zwei Projekte in Äthiopien finanziert. Auch der milliardenteure Palast, den der äthiopische Premierminister bauen lassen möchte, obwohl seine Bevölkerung massiv leidet, war beim Treffen kein Thema. Das Prestigeobjekt zum Ruhme des Landes soll größer werden als Windsor, das Weiße Haus, der Kreml und Chinas verbotene Stadt zusammen. Es stellt eine scheinbare Diskrepanz dar, dass ein Land, das eine beträchtliche finanzielle Unterstützung von anderen Ländern erhält, dennoch mit anhaltender Armut zu kämpfen hat. Zugleich erweckt die Tatsache, dass der Ministerpräsident einen Palast bauen will, der größer ist als 840 Fußballfelder, bei vielen Menschen Verwunderung. The official working visit commenced on Monday afternoon with Prime Minister Abe Ahmed arriving in Prague. A formal reception awaited him at the office of the government of Zek Republic where he was welcomed by his Zek counterpart Prime Minister Petri Fiala. The official welcoming ceremony set the tone of the discussions that would follow during the visit. During the bilateral exchanges between the two leaders, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and Prime Minister Fiala expressed their shared dedication to expanding cooperation across various sectors. The focal points of collaboration include agriculture, mining and tourism. Additionally, both leaders underscored their commitment to strengthening existing ties in the defense sector. A notable aspect of the visit was Prime Minister Abiy's exploration of sites linked to the Ethiopian partnership in agriculture, tourism and culture. Eritrean and Ethiopian forces began their attack on the town of Aksum with indiscriminate shelling, according to rights group Amnesty International. It's released these videos and a report. It says on the 28th of November last year, Tigrayan militia and civilians tried to fight back. Some of them armed with only sticks and stones, attacking Eritrean soldiers on this hill. It says the militia failed and the reprisals were brutal. 
According to dozens of testimonies, Amnesty says Eritrean troops came into the town and executed hundreds of civilian men and teenage boys. This video shows the body of one of them. People describe harrowing uh, uh, scenes of, uh, of people running and being shot in the back or people being, you know, lined up one behind the other and execu executed uh, by, uh, by Eritrean soldiers. Eritrea's government didn't respond to our requests for comment. It has previously denied its troops were in Ethiopia. Ethiopia's government, in a statement, questioned the accuracy of Amnesty's sources and said it was committed to undertake investigations. In early November, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed sent federal forces into the Tigray region. He said it was a law enforcement operation to topple the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front that had dominated Ethiopia's politics and military for nearly three decades before Abiy came to power. When government troops took control of the regional capital, Mekele, Abiy declared the operations over. But there have been reports of low-level fighting ever since. Researchers say these satellite images taken last week show hundreds of structures destroyed by fire in the town of Gijet. Amnesty International's Crisis Evidence Lab Geology okayed the video showing people carrying a dead man on a stretcher in De Aroela Plaza, towards Arbatatu Ensesa Church. High-resolution satellite imagery from December 13 shows disturbed earth consistent with recent graves around the Arbatatu Ensesa and the Abuna Oregawi churches. Intimidation and Looting in the days following the burials, the Eritrean army rounded up hundreds of residents in different parts of the city. They beat some of the men, threatening them with a new round of revenge killings if they resisted. Aksum residents witnessed a surge in the Eritrean army's looting during this period, targeting stores, public buildings including a hospital, and private homes. Luxury goods and vehicles were widely looted, as well as medication, furniture, household items, food, and drink. International humanitarian law, the laws of war, prohibits deliberate targeting of civilians, indiscriminate attacks, and pillage, looting. Violations of these rules constitute war crimes. Unlawful killings that form part of a widespread or systematic attack against a civilian population are crimes against humanity. Um, first of all, in relation to uh, Ethiopia, uh, we have no proof of the presence of Eritrean uh, troops uh, inside uh, uh, Ethiopia. I confronted the Prime Minister with that question and he guaranteed to me that uh, they have not entered uh, Tigrayan territory, that the only area where they are is the area that corresponded to the disputed territory between the two countries that uh, uh, in the peace agreement was decided to give back to Eritrea. So this was the testimony that was given to me by the Prime Minister when I confronted him exactly with that question. What is clear is that we have had, in a few weeks, thousands of children killed. So this is what matters. We are witnessing a killing of civilians that is unparalleled and unprecedented in any conflict since I am Secretary General. I would say that it's the, one of the reasons why Western society is struggling at the moment is because we have lost sight of the importance of keeping your word, the importance of being committed to the promises you make and to the agreements that you make. And in Christianity, discernment is an essential part of our spirituality as Christians. You know, so we don't get married without doing a discernment. So I'm, I'm, what I guess I'm suggesting to you at bottom line is that liberalism is killing the West. Christianity can save the West as a final one-liner.